Hello, guys. My name is Nicholas Camby, and welcome to volume two of equipment suggestions for strongman events, um, especially for you beginners or new to the sport. Um, just get a little um, some advice in terms of uh, when to use and when not to use certain equipment in terms of belts, knee sleeves, wrist straps um, when working on certain events. So let's get right into it. Um, so starting off with some deadlifting, um, depending on what is allowed. So for instance, you have suits, you have straps. So generally there'll be some rules around that. When it comes to straps, um, again, look, I would read the fine print, but the different type of straps are out there. Generally in the strongman world, you have kind of like the original loops. You have the figure eights, or then you, you also have the elongated straps, like the wow straps um, for a little bit more of, you can almost wrap it up twice for a little more um, assistance with the grip. Um, really, you can't go wrong with any of the three. Um, per, I prefer kind of the figure eights as is the easiest and fastest way to get um, strapped into a bar, especially if you have like a deadlift ladder that you really have to kind of run through because there's a race for time. Um, that's generally a good um, suggestion in terms of if it's a speed event. Um, but I've also had some great success on like a wow strap per, per se, using kind of a elongated strap to kind of really kind of wrap in. Um, but some contests will only allow you to wear the original loops. Um, so I would say for the most part, um, really depending on kind of what's a preference, but the original loops are going to be the easiest to learn, kind of the, the shorter um, when it comes to the learning curve and then the figure at figure eights and the, the elongated straps are going to take a little more time to figure out. But again, um, something to get familiar with if you really want to um, compete in the sports. Um, and then something within the rules as well, uh, especially with deadlifting, um, you get sometimes the option of wearing to suits and suits are allowed in competition. Um, and usually I would say that if a suit is allowed, um, I would wear it um, just because it will save your body for the rest of the events, especially if that contest is very heavy. Um, maybe if it was for a local competition, you might um, want to, you can also kind of hold back depending on who you're competing with and what the level of competition is at that local event. But usually if you're in a getting into kind of the mid and higher ranks when it comes to contests, I would say wearing a suit would probably be very beneficial. Um, and then when we look at like knee sleeves, um, I got a suggestion from top strongman not to wear knee sleeves on like a front handle or on a standard deadlift, just because you got to clear those knee sleeves when you're deadlifting. So you're putting about a half an inch or an inch of, um, of course, material that you had to get around when you're trying to lock out that deadlift. So if you don't, if you're, of course, you don't have any injuries to your knees and you don't have to wear knee sleeves directly on your knees, I would suggest not to. Um, some individuals will wear knee sleeves around their shins so they don't scrape up their shins as bad. Deadlift socks is another good um, variant of that. You can wear deadlift socks, again, to keep things kind of closer. Um, and again, they can also provide some warmth and some comfort. Usually they're a little bit, uh, help with a little bit of a compression. Um, so I would say those are probably my suggestions for deadlifts. I also want to talk about belt choice. Usually the harder belts are going to be the best for deadlifting. In my training, usually I'll put a soft belt and then put the hard belt on for a little extra comfort, but for a little more extra support, but getting away with either just a hard belt or doing that combo belt is probably the best way to go. Doing a more athletic belt for deadlifting, even if it's light, is not generally advantageous in this sense. So we're going to stick with something more, a little more stiffer, something a little more proven. Of course, next events is going to be for the yoke and farmers. Um, usually they're going to be pretty similar. Um, I like to wear kind of a flat shoe and kind of a, a light shoe uh, just because usually these are going to be speed events. So something like a minimus um, zeros, um, something that's really light and it does have a flat. I, I would say that's kind of preferred. Um, usually these are going to be races. So you're going to want to be the kind of the quickest out of the gate. And of course, the quickest to finish. Um, I would say that knee sleeves are heavily encouraged. Um, especially on yoke. Um, again, you're going to have some heavy weight on your back. You want to protect those knees, make sure they're nice and warm. So knee sleeves are very encouraged um, when doing these events. Um, again, on the yoke, I have seen some individuals, even like top strong men, wear wraps around their knees. Um, and I would say in those situations, like a really heavy yoke, you had like Martins Lesis at the Rogue Invitational last year. He wore wraps um, on a thousand pound yoke, but that also that thousand pound yoke went into a, um, a log press where they had to do it for at least three reps too. Um, and then whoever was finished, that was the fastest was um, the winner. Um, but I think in that sense, I think 
he was also get, trying to wear the wraps to get some bounce from the bottom when it comes to the log. Um, but I would say in some cases, if you don't need the wraps around knee, if you don't need that extra compression, I would say knee sleeves is probably the best way to go. But again, there's going to be some situation where wrapping knee is key. But if it's not a super heavy log or sorry, super heavy yoke, I wouldn't wear the I wouldn't wear the wraps. Um, something like elbow sleeves, um, especially on farmers and even on the yoke, might, might help to keep kind of like the elbow bicep system pretty warm, uh, pretty fresh, especially on, on farmers. You're going to be, of course, really using the grip. Um, grip can be really tight, can be really pretty, pretty tough, especially if you're getting a good forearm pump on the bicep. So keeping that whole system warm, keeping that whole system activated is pretty important. So elbow sleeve might be a good idea. You don't have to go too tight with them. Um, and then there's also a method in terms of wrist wraps, uh, even on the farmers, um, to help your grip a little bit. Um, usually, if you kind of close your hand and then wrap your wrap your wrist, it's be hard to close, open your hand. So, in sense, kind of help you with your grip. Um, but it's not something I've done in the recent times. But something you can kind of practice with if you kind of struggle with um, grip in certain strongman events. But also, my suggestion would be there would be doing more accessor accessories for your grip so your strength so your grip strength can be stronger. Um, again, wearing wraps is one option, but I think in the, in the at long run, I think just doing the a lot more accessory work, a lot, a lot more um, exercises geared towards building up the strength it might be more um, advantageous. So now moving on to the Atlas stones. Um, generally with stones, I think it's a um, you want to have the kind of like the best angles and be really be able to kind of dip into a good squat position so you can get that stone high on your chest so you can really load it up for maximal height and maximal efficiency. So I always say Olympic heels is better than using flats, especially if, if you don't have to move that much. Um, but even, even if you have to move, I would still go with the heels. Um, knee sleeves are going to be comfortable. Again, they're going to give you, hopefully give you a little more of a stretch reflex, a little more of a bounce on the bottom so you can stand up and really, again, throw that stone um, over the, over the post. Um, I believe that compression shorts might be a good choice here. Um, again, they're going to give you a little stiffness, um, give you a little more bounce at the bottom um, as well. And my suggestion in terms of either wearing just compression shorts or something over those compression shorts is either have like a layer of spandex um, or tighter shorts, just so um, the stones are not going to be sticking to the shorts. And sometimes I've seen situations where the stone sticks the shorts so much that it's harder to get the stone off your body onto the platform over the, over the bar, just because it's still kind of sticking onto you. So wearing something that, um, again, it's a little tighter to your body. It has, it's not going to stay. It's not going to move with the stone is a little more important. Um, but why would stones be sticking to your shorts? Usually there's going to be a lot of tacky involved. Um, preferably I like to use spider tacky. Um, that's my favorite tacky I've been using all 10 years. Um, and depending on the actual, um, the weather, if you're, if it's going to cold weather, like the heavy tacky is not going to be, it's going to be tough to use. Um, but, but in mild or hotter weather, the, the, the heavy tacky is the best to go, but usually competition grade is usually the mostly what, um, competitors choose, uh, for most of their competition, just because it's a good middle ground in terms of colder weather and also warmer weather. Um, but again, I'm a heavy person myself. Um, I, there's, the, there's also the option in terms of your forearms, um, to go sleeveless, to tape up your, tape up your forearms, to wear a stone sleeve. Um, I would say they're all great options. I personally go sleeveless. I get a little more connection to the stone. Of course it does kind of beat up my arms, but if I'm doing stones every other week, it does, does heal, um, in between those sessions, um, wearing, I would say kind of the tape. Um, if you don't do a good job with the tape, it can come up, it can, you can get sweaty and the tape com comes off. And then if you have tacking on top of that tape, that tacky is going to come down. So then if you're training or if you're in a contest, um, not having tacky on your forearm is going to be pretty detrimental with the actual sleeves. The sleeves are great, um, but it takes a lot of time to get into them. And also is another variable that can happen. So variable within your, um, within your contest equipment that something that could go wrong. Um, but I see a lot of people that are very happy with the sleeves is also a great option, but they do take some practice do take some time to work into. So I would say all three are viable options, but if you're going to go similar to myself, I would go, I would go sleeveless. Um, and then just to state the obvious, um, elbow sleeves and wrist wraps would probably get in the way of stone. So I would, I would do without them for this particular event.
moving on to the truck pull, which is a very fun event. Um, I think what's really important is to have shoes that are really grippy. Usually truck poles are going to be on pavement. They're going to be outside because you're going to be pulling a truck. truck. You're going to need that space. Um, but I would get yourself a good pair of rock climbers, but not just any kind of rock climbers. I would say the, the usual rock climber that's out there for those really intense rock climbers or with the very pointed uh, toes are going to be pretty tough to get into. They're super tight um, and usually not that comfortable. Um, but for instance, uh, 510, a rock climbing company also makes um, kind of like a guide rock climber, which is kind of an athletic um, build to a rock climber. And they have, a, um, of course, a very comfortable wear, but they also have the, their sole um, has these, of course, deep rubber circles um, that, again, are great for grip. And um, even if you're using an event for like even like a pull and in this situation, the truck, even there's a truck pull, you're pretty much you're driving with those legs. Um, you're going to, you're not going to slip or anything like that. Um, and then in the event that you're using them on a convention floor, they also could be pretty helpful as well. Um, so usually within in those, anything that needs traction on pavement, I would say, get yourself a good pair of athletic rock climbers. Um, you can eat, you can wear wrist, wrist, wrist wraps and elbow sleeves here, but I would say again, just to keep everything warm, but not really necessary. I would say since you're driving a lot, knee sleeves could be a good look, maybe a more athletic knee sleeve. But again, it's going to be on the preference for you there. Even on the truck pull, you can wear gloves, but I would say depending on the rope, it might be better to wear the gloves, but obviously feel the texture of the rope that you'd be using before deciding to wear gloves or not. Um, but going on to the next event, we have the Fagel Fingers. Um, which is, of course, a great event, pushing those big columns over. Um, usually those are going to be metal, and metal can be kind of slippery the way that you have to clean the implement or clean the finger in order to get your chest so you can engage those shoulders. Um, so usually gloves is a good idea, um, starting off with the gloves and then taping the bottom of the gloves um, of course, taping the wrist part so the gloves don't fall off because usually they have a tendency to slip because usually you're trying to hoist either a 200, 300 pound, 400 pound finger um, over and just the way you have to um, clean it, those gloves can come off. So I would say, again, taping those gloves is very important. Um, and especially since once you start driving, getting the hand over hand and kind of finishing out the finger uh, to push it over, it is going to be a lot of shoulders and upper body. So um, elbow sleeves might not be a bad idea here, to, again, just to keep that bicep elbow system all, all warmed up and activated. Um, and then in this situation, I would say that like an athletic belt or a soft belt would be a good idea here since it's a very kind of athletic movement. So like similar to what you'd be wearing if you're doing like a power clean or a um, or a snatch, you want to be in a sense of being pretty athletic. Um, knee, knee sleeves, I would say, again, if you, if you need them, um, or if you generally wear them, I would say that would be a good idea um, in this sense as well. When it comes to medleys and carries to loads, um, so of course you have like an odd object medley, a sandbag medley, um, keg medley, of course there's all different objects that you can carry and load. Um, I would say usually there's, I would say gloves would be Having a pair of gloves would be great. Um, elbows, you don't necessarily see wrist straps. Again, you'd be running a lot, so knee sleeves might be a, not be a bad idea. Usually you want to be athletic, so a soft belt would be better than wearing a hard belt, hard belt or wearing a lever belt in this situation. Um, and again, um, very similar to that of a yoke. And farmers, you're gonna, you want to be, um, of course, the fastest that you can, so maybe being in the flats. And again, those minimuses, those zero type of shoes, those might not be, those might be the best idea in terms of uh, footwear going forward. And then um, the other event that I would like to mention in this, in this little series would be Power Stairs. Power Stairs seems to be making a little bit more of a comeback in more usual shows. Um, and within the Power Stairs, you usually have something like a duck walk implement or implement that's in between your legs and you're kind of doing a, a sumo to lift that up to the stairs. Um, in that situation, if depending on your leverages and your height, it might not be a bad idea to wear heels. Um, it might give you a, an extra inch or an inch and a half to really lift that up, implement onto the next stair and then being able to kind of drive um, within your heels and really depending on 
um, again, kind of where your strengths are when it comes to um, being more of an elevated shoe versus a kind of a flat shoe. Uh, but if you're used to used to uh, squatting in Olympics and doing doing your Olympic movements within Olympic shoes, so I think it would be a probably a good idea. Um, but I would say that's the um, that's it for this episode. I'm probably going to do one more in terms of the other events. So uh, we've been covering almost more than more than half the events out there. Um, but if you have any suggestions on particular events you want me to cover, uh, please leave them in the comments. Um, don't forget to check out my instructional videos. I'm coming out and posting a lot more um, every week. So check, make sure to check those out to really refresh and to enhance your strongman game. Um, don't forget about my programs I have there on the overhead. If you're looking to kind of looking for a program for the summer to, of course, build those shoulders and to really improve your press going into the competition season, which is, or the post season, which we generally find ourselves in the fall. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe and follow. And for next time, please stay strong.